Exactly uh, one week after a surprise resignation as the CIA director, David Petraeus, was on Capitol Hill this morning. He was testifying behind closed doors. We're now hearing uh, what he uh, told the Senate and House Intelligence Committees about the deadly attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya. Our senior uh, congressional correspondent, Dana Bash, has been watching what's going on. Uh, what are you hearing, uh, Dana? What did Petraeus have to say? Well, one of the main reasons why lawmakers wanted him to come here, even though he is no longer the director of the CIA, is because he took a trip to Libya uh, recently that he hasn't had a chance to come here and brief lawmakers on. So that was one big thing. But the other was to try to clear up, I emphasize try, some confusion about intelligence, especially in those days after the attack. Cameras were ready before dawn, hoping to catch a glimpse of David Petraeus coming to brief lawmakers about the deadly attack in Benghazi one week after resigning in disgrace. Petraeus came, but no one saw him. He went behind those doors, which is where he is right now, if you can see back there, without anybody seeing him. In fact, the committee, for some reason, decided to protect him, and they really had to go to great lengths to effectively sneak him in. Lawmakers admit they protected Petraeus because he agreed to come voluntarily with the hope of clearing up confusion about intelligence in the days after September's deadly attack. But Petraeus' testimony didn't seem to clear much up, especially whether he downplayed information about terrorist involvement. The clear impression we were given was that uh, the overwhelming amount of evidence was that it was a uh, arose out of a spontaneous demonstration and was not a, uh, a terrorist attack. That was the Republican reaction. Democrats insist Petraeus has been consistent. It's all about your perception and the information that you receive. He also said that in the group there were extremists and some al-Qaeda affiliates and that was said that in the very beginning the most politically charged controversy is over UN ambassador Susan Rice's comments five days after the attack why she blamed it on Benghazi demonstrations officials now say didn't even happen and why she didn't mention terrorist forces intelligence officials now believe actually targeted the US consulate there Democrats emerged saying the answer is simple she was using these unclassified CIA talking points which omitted mention of extremist elements because it was still classified and could have compromised intelligence sources she used the unclassified talking points that were signed off on by the entire intelligence community so criticisms of her are completely unwarranted. Democrats accuse Republicans of unnecessarily assassinating Rice's character. You don't kill her in the person. And to select Ambassador Rice because she used an unclassified talking point to say that she is unqualified to be Secretary of State, I think, is a mistake. But Republicans say the problem is Rice freelanced. She went beyond that and she even mentioned that under the leadership of Barack Obama we had decimated Al-Qaeda. Well she knew at that point in time that Al-Qaeda was very likely responsible in part or in whole for the death of Ambassador Stevens. Now, Wolf, our intrepid uh, photographers and producers did finally get a picture just of uh, General Petraeus's car leaving at the end of the five hours that he was here, uh, the five hours that he was here, he was here for the House and Senate intelligence briefings. Now, during that, you might want to know whether or not the whole question of his affair and his resignation come, came up. We're told that it did, particularly at the beginning of the House intelligence briefing. Uh, the chairman said, point blank, uh, do, you, do you feel that you know, you're comfortable doing this, given what happened. And he said yes, and he also made the case that he did not resign because of anything having to do with Benghazi. And one last thing I can tell you is that I asked Peter King, the congressman, whether it was awkward, uh, given the state of play right now with, Gen with General Petraeus. And he said, sure, it was awkward, particularly because so many people in the room know him well and have uh, long time had respect for him. Sure, it was very, very awkward, uh, Dana. Thanks very much. Uh, let's dig a little bit deeper right now into the controversy, uh, including the controversy flaring around the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Susan Rice, what she said five days after the attack about the Benghazi uh, attack. Uh, let's discuss in our strategy session. Joining us are CNN contributors, the Democratic strategist James Carville and the former Bush White House press secretary, Ari Fleischer. Uh, Ari, is it fair to go after Susan Rice like this? Well, I don't think it's a question of go after, don't go after, but she did attribute this to the video. She did, working off of intelligence, say something that was incomplete. 
And of course, as we learned in that famous second debate, the president, apparently, did declare this specific attack as terrorist the day after the attack took place. So if the president could do it one day after, why was she saying something totally different five days after? Would it be wise, James, uh, for the president to go ahead and nominate her to be Hillary Clinton's successor as Secretary of State? Well, if that's what he wants to do, he, he, she should. I mean, she's a, a long, distinguished career as a diplomat. She's now a U.N. ambassador. She's obviously eminently qualified. Uh, she was talking off of, off of the talking points. I, I guess that you could criticize the administration for putting the U.N. ambassador out on something that really wasn't in her chain of command or line of duty, and she was probably what wasn't the most knowledgeable person to be saying that, but that, that would be a fair criticism. But to say that disqualifies, dis, disqualifies her from being Secretary of State is, that, that doesn't even seem to amount to anything to me. Uh, and like I say, she, she can go before Congress and testify if she's nominated. I'm sure she'll do a great job. She's a very, very experienced, very, very accomplished diplomat. It seems to me she'd bring great honor to our country being our Secretary of State. You know, the comparison has been made, Ari. You tell me if you think it's a fair comparison. The Senate confirmed Condoleezza Rice as Secretary of State, even though she had talking points about so-called weapons of mass destruction in Iraq that were really never there. She talked from those talking points, yeah. but she was confirmed. Uh, is that a fair comparison? Well, let me make a couple points. One, if the Democratic argument today is, as they're saying, that if you rely on what the CIA says, then what you've done is proper, then I think they owe a lot of people in the Bush administration an apology, because that's exactly what we did, repeating what the CIA said about WMDs. As for the confirmation of Secretary of State, I think the one difference, and this is pending, is the mistake that was made in the Bush administration was fully investigated, and it was revealed that the CIA did get it wrong. We still don't know who's right and who's wrong here in this instance about whether or not there was a video that was blamed or, or why the administration blamed on the video. We still don't have full information, the investigation's underway right. about what right. happened, what was said, why it was said, right. and who right. got it right, who got it wrong. So I, that's I thought, the difference, Wolf. We, we did learn from one instance, and people had that information in hand when they voted to confirm. We don't have that yet. I, I think that the administration uh, appointed Ambassador Pickering, probably the most respected ambassador in modern diplomacy, to head an investigation. I think that General Petraeus has already testified. The head of counterterrorism has testified. The Secretary of State is going to testify in December. I think the administration has been very, very, very forthcoming. I don't recall, maybe I'm wrong, anybody appointing somebody to look into the weapons of mass destruction the day after we discovered that that that, that, uh, yeah, that they probably the weren't there. Rock but rock I, I'll argue, but they, they really appointed a top hand to look into this, and we will find out what it is. And I, I suspect, and by the way, I suspect when we find out, we're going to find out some people made some mistakes. I, I, I don't think there's much doubt about that. All right. Hold uh, on, guys. Hold on, guys. So often. Hold on, because we have more to discuss. I want both of you to uh, keep, uh, stay with us right now, because we're going to talk about a member of Mitt Romney's campaign team who now says Romney lost because Latinos are scared of Republicans. We're learning about a new group being formed to try to solve that problem for the GOP.